It is another beautiful day in New York City and we have a very interesting vlog today because we're doing something a little different at the hospital and that thing is live case broadcast to the entire world. This week we're doing something called TREAT, which is transradial arterial embolization something. I don't know, I'll post it up here because I forgot the name of it. So basically what we do during this course is we just essentially broadcast live cases to the entire world of some crazy interesting transradial cases that we are doing this week. So I know what's on the docket in terms of procedures this week and I'll bring you along for the ride. Check it out everybody. The brand new hat for Treat 2020. We did a new color every single year. Last year was blue. This year is a burgundy port wine color. So we are here today. It is officially Tuesday morning now. And today is the big day for our live case presentation. You've now seen the new hat we get to wear today and everybody on our team wears it because today is a huge team effort and everybody has to participate to make sure everything runs smoothly. We are running one, two, three, four rooms, I believe. We're going to be having cases in there the entire day, cutting to each room, back and forth, back and forth, and let's see how everything goes. And then he's gonna put a green screen here for the moderators. Here, he runs everything on his computer. It's pretty cool, right? There's gonna be two IT guys, they run the cameras and all. You can see the 4K camera there. That's gonna- That's sick. That's gonna film the moderators, and then they have the TV up here. So that is just a little sneak peek. I'll film some of the procedures and me doing procedures and all that sort of stuff, and we'll see what happens. All right, so we are about to start the voiceover portion of this video, which you all requested so much. So we're back in the IR suite here. This is me in the bottom right corner getting scrubbed in. That is my co-resident. He is a R3 IR resident, Dr. Tim Carlin, helping me set up for the procedure. And yes, we do set up uh, for our own procedures in New York City especially. A lot of programs vary with the setup, but the residents and fellows tend to set up all of the cases in New York City. Where I came from at University of North Carolina, the techs actually set everything up for us, and it was very uh, nice to say the least. So that spin I just did was me just tying my gown prior to uh, scrubbing in completely. The patient is completely covered at this point on the IR table and we are just getting everything ready for the transradial procedure. Practicing good radiation safety here, lifting the bed as high as possible to decrease the scatter, and we bring the flat panel detector close to the patient as we can as well. So right now I'm getting all of the radial access supplies ready for the uh, transradial access. There's a 21 gauge needle a small wire, a sheath, and a radial cocktail as well. That was my attending who just walked over, Dr. Aaron Fishman. He just walked over and said hello to the patient. What sedation do we have so far? Uh, we do have anesthesiology on board here, sedating this patient. There my attending asked what sedation the patient had uh, for a fentanyl and Versed, which is our usual sedation. We got uh, 15 yeah, let's do a quick timeout, everyone. We're all here. Right now, I'm getting the flush bag set up for the sheath. And that stick and a burn I just told the patient about was the lidocaine going in underneath the skin. We usually inject about one cc for transradial cases. That's pretty much all you need for this. So I'm currently trying to get access into the radial artery here. If you look closely at the ultrasound machine, you see that white area, that is the radial styloid, and the radial artery is right on top of that. I was actually having a lot of trouble getting this access. It was a really, really, really small artery. Uh, my tendon also had trouble, but we ultimately ended up getting it between the two of us. So the sheath is in at this point and I'm hooking up the uh, flush bag to the sheath. It keeps a constant drip of heparinized saline into the sheath to make sure it doesn't clot off during the procedure. I need a 
vial at 200 hydrocorals, Alex. I'm flushing the sheath right now. And connecting the flush bag. So now we have Dr. Blue, Dr. Fishman, who are both attendings, and Dr. Carlin next to my left right now. Three mics. Two. We need Blue and Michael to have a microphone. Can I get a thousand of nitro and five milligrams of verapamil in two separate syringes? So he wants nitro and verapamil in case the arteries we encounter get into spasm, and we can kind of open them up during the procedure. My co-resident, Matt Tangle, brings me over a headset. So right now I'm advancing the wire and catheter through the radial sheath we got access in, and I'm watching it as it goes around through the uh, subclavian artery and down through the arch. We're trying to find the origin of the right prostatic artery here. And we are about to start our live component of this case conference right now. Good morning, everyone. I am uh, I'm, I'm here in room five. We have a great case for you. I'm standing next to uh, Dr. Cellini here and Dr. Blue, as well as Dr. Carlin, uh, one of our uh, PGY3 residents and one of our PGY6 residents, and then Dr. Blue is one of our partners here. Um, so I'm going to turn the, uh, the slides over to Dr. Cellini, he's going to present the case for you guys. Alright, so we're going to present a case of prostatic artery embolization, as you know. So this is a chief complaint here, um, lots of lower, lower urinary tract symptoms, secondary to BPH. 20 year history of BPH, which, which has been managed well with finasteride. So I'm going to show, I'm going to show Rahul what, we, what we've done so far. Can you, can you see, uh, can you see the wrist? Can we zoom in on the wrist maybe? All right, so uh, we've got access with a five, four or five slender sheath, uh, and then we came down, you guys can see the floral feet, we came down the arch with a, uh, an aqua vert, four French vert, which is 125 centimeters and a best of line. Uh, and then you guys saw the CTA. Um, you guys can see the, the anatomy here, and this is actually a pretty tricky iliac anatomy. It took us a, a few minutes to actually get into that internal iliac on the right side. Uh, but we were able to do that uh, with a glide wire. And this was our first angio, and you guys can match that up with what we saw on the pre CTA. So I do a CTA in pretty much every case uh, for several reasons. I think we taught, I know someone was talking in the previous case about planning, and I think this is a key part of planning for our, uh, for our prostate embolizations to find out exactly what we're going to be dealing with. Uh, so we weren't surprised when we saw that origin. Uh, I'm going to let, uh, we're going to sort of try to get into this artery here. You guys can see it. So this is a 2.0 uh, Terumo prograde microcatheter with an 0.16 fathom wire. Okay. Um, we are going to sort of just, oh, it looks like we're pretty deep into the vessel already. So we're going to sort of stop here and take our wire out. We're going to do a quick uh, little angio. Yeah, it's very tortuous, and we're, we're basically hub. Um, I, I think you guys saw the wrist, but this 125 catheter is completely hub. Rahul, I can hear you, but I, I, I don't think you can hear me. All right. I'm using, I'm using 200 hydroperol, Rahul. That's generally been my experience. I don't think the lidocaine is that useful because we're not seeing a lot of that type of pain. Um, most, what's more important is nitro and then anti-inflammatories. We're starting to actually see a collateral here. You guys can see that very um, very subtly on the monitor here. So we're going to take a 1x as we ingest. Sometimes that helps sort of uh, get a sense of what we're dealing with. But this, we're getting close to sort of finishing this side. Um, and then we're, we're, you know, I was going to talk to you guys a little bit about how we finish these cases, whether we put gel foam in, um, 
whether we put uh, coils, other things, to sort of try to completely include this vessel. And I know this is uh, the sound is a little off right now, so I'm having a hard time sort of communicating with you guys in real time. So it's a little bit, a little bit challenging. But what I will tell you is that we're going to probably put a coil in this artery uh, at the end of the procedure. Sorry, it's four millimeters we're going. Four millimeters. You guys can zoom in on the, on the detacher for us. You guys can see that? Check to make sure it's off. We put one more in and then we're done on the side. Alright, well, we're going to go to the other side. We'll, we'll come back. Chris, can you go with this after we Yeah, let's go to the other side. Okay. So before we go over to the left side, we're gonna place one more coil in the right. We are actually using a detachable coil system here. And you'll see me grab this green box. I place it on the end of the coil. It lights up to let it know that it's ready to be detached. And then you can actually pull out the wire after that. So right now we're just making some simple adjustments before we go over to the left side to make sure we see what we're doing. We have to pull the catheter out of the right internal iliac artery. And what we'll end up doing is pulling the catheter back under fluoroscopy, injecting some contrast, and then advancing it into the contralateral left common iliac artery, and ultimately into the left internal iliac artery. Another vial of hydropearl, Alex? Yeah, 200. Yeah. Here you see Dr. Fishman ask for another vial of hydropearls. That is the embolic or the particle embolic that we're using for the prosthetic artery embolization. We use 200 micron in size for this particular case. So right now we're about to do a run and what we'll end up doing is tilting the II or C-arm in an ipsilateral oblique fashion to better characterize the internal iliac artery. Uh, it's four for 20. Okay. So right there, four for 20, that's our rate of contrast injection, four cc's a second for a total of 20 cc's volume. This beep right here is the contrast going in. We're doing a digital subtraction in geography. And we usually leave the room for this because the radiation is a lot higher than just normal fluoro. Uh, that's okay. I mean, we're just embolizing. We're getting a great embolization on this side. And we talked about endpoints. We're basically at that endpoint now. Um, we're pretty distal. I mean, we could probably go a little bit more distal, but I think we're filling up that bottom uh, segment of this artery very well. All right, we're done. So right now we are all finished up. We did the same thing on the left side as we did on the right side. Right now we have to take off the sterile field. We'll put on the TR band over the left wrist where we access the left radial artery. You'll see Dr. Fishman do that right now. I'm just moving the CR out of the way. So the TR band is basically a little watch we put over the radial access site and blow up a balloon. You'll see them insert 15 cc's of air right now. We slowly let it down and take out the sheath and leave it up for about an hour and a half. Check for pulse after you place the TR band. You should have good hemostasis here. And that's it. This video is sponsored by Skillshare.
Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get lost in creativity. Now, as you all know, I recently picked up a brand new laptop and updated my video editing software. And now I'm trying to up my game with edits and filmmaking. This is where Skillshare comes into play. I'm currently watching Filmmaking from Home by Penny Lane and it's amazing. Literally in the first few videos, I've already learned how to sharpen my storytelling and better edit my videos. One of the best things about Skillshare is the ability to work at your own pace. You can advance through classes as quickly or slowly as you wish. When and how you learn is entirely up to you. Whether you're looking to fend off boredom, focus on self-care through creativity, or join similar creative communities, Skillshare is the place to keep you learning. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership, and after that, it's only around $10 a month. And it's not just creative classes, by the way. They have something for everyone. Financial classes, marketing, and entrepreneur classes, just to name a few. There is something for everybody. So do yourself a favor and click the link in my description. The first thousand people to click the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership.